So guys, thank you again for coming to Back to Basics. We are going to be talking about dieting, weight, hmm, losing weight. Why should we lose weight? Is it really healthy for you or is it? I mean, those are the questions we'll be asking. And the main question that we're going to be asking is how, right? The steps that we're going to take or the design of your body, right? The design of your life. I mean, that's what we're going to be talking about. So we have a guest today, and I'm very privileged of uh, getting David on the call. We talked briefly on right before this call today, plus even on LinkedIn, and that's how we connected. And I'm pretty sure David is going to tell us more details as to how he feels that he's on Back to Basics, right? He's done a lot, and he's here on this show. So let's talk to David and uh, let's uh, get to know him better. David, how are you? And thanks for coming to Back to Basics. I'm doing great, Kirish. Thank you for having me as a guest today. Uh, of course, of course. Thank you again for coming here. But before we talk about your book and the dieting and the steps and what I just said earlier, what does Back to Basic mean to you? Back to Basic means to me that you're going back to what is simple, what works. Because mm -hmm. when it's complicated, there's too many things that can go wrong. And getting back to basics meaning to me, eating healthier, more natural whole foods that mother nature makes and that's not made in a lab by someone in a white lab coat yeah 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 thank you thank you again david for answering that question and thank you again for coming on back to basics and it's as simple as that isn't it just like what i asked you and uh there's not really much to say on that part <laughs> but david let me let me ask you this right um the book that we're we're gonna get into the book but i wanted to ask you what made you get into this this realm? I mean, there had to be something. I mean, you didn't wake up in the morning and I'm going to lose weight or design my life that way. There had to be something. Can you explain? Well, you sure. In July of 2016, my doctor told me, based on my lab results and being significantly overweight, <clears throat> I had a 95% chance for a fatal heart attack. Hmm. So he gave me two options. He said, David, you can lose weight or find a new doctor. And he strongly encouraged me to find a new doctor because he had been after me for eight years to mm -hmm. lose the weight. And I hadn't done anything. Like most people, I procrastinated. You know, I'll start on Monday. I'll start after the holidays, after vacation. Uh, it's too difficult. It costs too much money. Whatever excuse I could use, that's what I did. However, during the next four months, I shed 50 pounds, 25% of my total body weight. And more importantly, I've kept it off. So now mm -hmm. I want to help others do the same. Hmm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you again. And, you know, can I just ask you a simple question? I mean, the, the, why do we always tend to make plans when we're just going rock bottom or when someone tells you that you're going rock bottom? Why can't we just do it decently? I mean, is that the normal human thing to do? What are your thoughts on that? In my opinion, that's it. I mean, we all know what to do. We just don't do it. Hmm. Um, later on, we'll go through some of the nine, you know, secrets i call them or basic steps and when people see them they're like well i know that mm -hmm. i understand you know that the question is are you doing it and if not why not so mm -hmm. most of us know what to do we just don't do it yeah yeah so basically the word that we're looking for is laziness i mean or or just pure lazy i mean what are your thoughts on that part i mean is that the word i should be looking for um uh, no I would say procrastination is a better word for it. Okay. We tend to put off to tomorrow what we can do today. And yeah. since tomorrow never comes, if we keep putting off to tomorrow what can be done today and tomorrow never comes, we'll never do what needs to be done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. David, thank you. Thank you again. And thank you for being who you are because you you made that steps. And, and now I think you came a long way. How long did that take you to make that transition change? Well, the first four months I lost the 50 pounds. And after that, I modified my eating habits and changed my uh, lifestyle. Hmm. Before I gained the weight, when I was younger, I was always fit and trim. However, like many of us, life gets in the way. And hmm. with family responsibilities and work obligations, before I knew it, the, we the you know weight crept up on me until hmm. it got to be a point where it was um, going to be fatal if I didn't do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again, David. And and guys, whoever is listening on here, I mean, if you want to call in, just call in. I mean, we're going to be we're going to be here for the next 30 minutes and 
we, we want to be diligent to the guest. And the number that it is, is 513-900-2221. And that's 513-900-2221. And just make sure that the questions are short because we do want to crunch up the time to and be diligent to, to the guest too at the same time. So th David, so let's go straight to the book if you don't mind. So the name of the book is Break the Chain of Dieting, right? And it yeah. says nine fundamentals must have principles for healthy weight loss. And this is the, this is the book. And uh, guys, he shipped me the book. So thank you again, David, for that. So the first thing is, did the did the book come first or did the title come first or is kind of yin and yang because i mean the title says it all really the book came first it was a different title initially okay. and i got some feedback on it and most people didn't like the the title so we changed it hmm. and how i came across the title was because of the image that's on the front cover hmm. of the word diet with a chain around it hmm. Do, do you want to do you want to explain? I'm sorry to interrupt, but do you want to explain what the the title was originally? Uh, originally, I was going to call it the dark side of dieting. Okay, okay. Because people go on diets and they tend to be extreme, temporary, hard to stick with, and a lot of them are potentially unhealthy for for people. Okay. So I wanted to look at it that way, and people felt no, that needed to be more uplifting. So the book is entertaining because mm -hmm. I use short stories and some fables and analogies and mm -hmm. apply the life lessons from those short stories to eating healthier, mm -hmm. which then translates to losing weight. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people is if you want to lose weight, don't go on a diet, mm -hmm. change your diet. And that's what people need to understand. Our bodies are incredible machines and we have to look at what kind of fuel are we putting into it? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people take better care of their automobiles and their pets than they do their own bodies. Mm -hmm. But David, uh, thank you again for that. You, so you're telling me that I can eat everything? No, I'm telling you, you can eat everything that you like that's healthy for you. There's a big difference. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> for example, our food today is being scientifically engineered to optimize our cravings for fat, salt, sugar, and texture. Mm. It's a term called bliss point. And that term was coined by Howard Moskowitz, who was employed by the health or the food industries for over 30 years. He's responsible for the different flavors of Prego spaghetti sauce, Campbell's soups, different varieties of Dr. Pepper and all other products. And what people need to understand is it's not the food that we're consuming, it's what they've done to the food. And a lot of times it's not even food. And what I mean by that is it's made in a lab by people in a white uh, lab coat and they're using chemicals. So it's not made by mother nature. And that's the big difference. I call them edible products. Hmm. And these products, <clears throat> they're toxic and they're poisonous. And people are like, well, it doesn't affect me. Of course not, because it's such a small amount. However, hmm. after you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, that's when you start seeing the consequences of the poor eating habits that we have. Hmm. That's why if you're over age 50 in the United States, there's an 80% probability you're a type 2 diabetic or pre-diabetic. Hmm. And if you're a pre-diabetic, what that means is if you do not change your eating habits, you'll be a full blown type two diabetic within seven years. Mm -hmm. So imagine that people over age 50, 80% of them are most likely going to be a type two diabetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, thank you again for that. So basically you can eat everything, but the thing is that you need to be diligent of what you're eating and, and it has to be healthy also at the same time. Uh, but is this the right approach that you can eat everything, but you need to be more moderations. Well, yeah, I, I still enjoy a piece of chocolate cake or pumpkin sure. pie or pecan pie. I don't, you know, overindulge like I used to. Instead of taking a full slice or a large piece, I take a sliver and, and enjoy it. I eat slower now. Mm. Uh, I've reduced my portion sizes. Mm. I drink a lot more water. 72% of the U.S. adult population is overweight. And there's mm. a direct correlation to not drink enough water. And that's mm. because 75% of the U.S. adult population is chronically dehydrated. Mm. Our bodies are 60 to 70% water, mm. not soda, diet soda, fruit juices, or fruit flavored beverages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but David, uh, thank you again for that. <clears throat> do, you, do, you, do you think in the last maybe, let's say, 10 years or 15 years, I mean, the transition has kind of changed in the schools, right, of not giving 
more sugar or soda or any um not really crap but not really good snacks either right now they're giving them healthy snacks don't you think that now we're coming to a stage that we're getting a little better or do you think you we still have a long way to go we have a long way to go for example uh, most people think orange juice is healthy for you it's not mm. it's loaded with sugar and not too much fiber it right. takes four to eight medium sized oranges to make a glass of orange juice so mm. what i ask people is would you eat four to eight oranges at one sitting and mm. most people would say no of course not but that's how much sugar you're getting in your body mm. uh, the other thing is there's a lot of imitation uh, meats out there the impossible burger beyond burger imitation chicken and fish those are, again are maybe plant-based but again look at the chemicals that they put in to make it taste like meat you're better off eating grass-fed beef or you know free-range chickens than you are eating the imitation and fake stuff and the way i look at it is if it's not made by mother nature don't eat it yeah yeah D david thank you thank you again i are we saying that we should go vegetarian or are we saying that we should be finding good meat and is there a better way to find it i'm not saying you have to be a vegetarian i'm not i enjoy a good steak every once in a while sure. i eat fish i eat chicken uh so it's all on your likes and dislikes again uh there's arguments on both sides whether you should be you know more plant-based and vegetarian or not however what I use for that argument is the Eskimos don't have much of a choice. They don't get fresh vegetables and fruits, so they have to rely on, you know, the, the salmon and the other stuff that they eat, which is different. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. So, David, so the, the nine fundamentals, so is that, are they steps? Are they the ways to do it? Or are they nine stories of small, uh, you know, nine different people? Uh, no, it, it's different steps that people can implement. And if you do it gradually, uh, mm -hmm. you can, you know, do a couple steps at a time. So it's not extreme. So for example, the first one is to drink more pure water. Again, mm -hmm. our bodies are 60 to 70% water and it's not soda or diet soda. And then the question is, well, how much water should I drink? Mm -hmm. Minimum, you should drink 64 ounces of water or one half of your total body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should drink a minimum of 100 ounces of, of water each day. And again, if you're doing a lot of physical activity or exercising, then you need to drink more water to replenish what you're, the fluids that you're losing. And that doesn't mean drinking more Gatorade or these um, electrolyte drinks. Those are, again, are chemicals. In fact, the original Gatorade formula has been changed and modified so much, it looks nothing like it was back in the 1970s when it was created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again. And uh, so if, if you don't mind just going through the, the steps on, on the nine uh, fundamentally, briefly, if you don't mind. Sure. First one, like I said, drink more water. Second one is to avoid highly processed and manufactured foods. The third thing is to eat more of the uh, whole holistic foods, whether it be, you know, grass fed beef or free range chickens or, you know, organic plants and vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of nuts and, and legumes and beans. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is to eat slower. We all tend to eat very fast, mm. eat smaller portions. Our portions have been supersized without us realizing it. The reason I say that is in the 1900s, the average size dinner plate was nine inches in diameter. Today, mm. it's 12 inches. And in restaurants, it's 13 to 15 inches. Yet in Europe, it's still nine inches in diameter. So what mm. I tell people is to use a salad plate instead of a dinner size plate. Mm. The next thing is to get adequate sleep. Because when we're sleep deprived, we tend to consume an extra 500 calories the next day. Mm -hmm. And in order to lose weight, you need to reduce your caloric intake by 500 calories per day for an entire week. Mm -hmm. So we go in the wrong direction when we're sleep deprived. Mm -hmm. The next thing is to do what I call um, an intermittent fast or give your body time to digest and process the food. Mm -hmm. And most people can do it without even attempting or doing it now. If you stop eating three hours before you go to bed, so let's say you go to bed at 10 o'clock at night and you stop eating at seven or eight o'clock at night and your first meal breakfast, which means to break the fast is at nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, that's 12 to 14 hours. Mm. So a lot of people say, well, what do you do when you first get up? If you want to eat, I drink 20 ounces of water right away. Mm. And so that rehydrates you and also uh, reduces your appetite. So you can go the extra hour or two 
without putting food into your body. Hmm. So that's one thing. Then also keep a positive mindset. 80% of our thoughts are negative. Just imagine if we change that to make it 80% positive. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, oh, I'm on a diet, not allowed to have that, say, I'm watching what I eat and I'm choosing to eat healthy and this is what I prefer to eat. Big mm -hmm. difference in how you approach things. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is to um, walk each day or do some type of physical activity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's all nine of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again, David. But let, let me let me ask you this, right? I mean, I, I I have seen a lot of people do this, right? Let's say if we're going to a uh, a party or something like that on a weekend, like on Saturday and then Sundays, right? And they say, well, I don't feel like eating this because I'm on a diet. So now the first question comes out of my mouth is, what happened to the other five days that you were working? So it should be an everyday thing instead of just doing it that one day. What What are your thoughts on that part? Oh, maybe I agree. I'm, I'm wrong. I mean, oh, no, I agree. It should be a lifestyle. And, and that's what I, I teach people is you're not on a diet. A diet is similar to a sprint. A sprint mm -hmm. has a finish line. A diet mm -hmm. has a finish line, which is the goal. And mm -hmm. that's what happens. A lot of people will reach their goal, lose the weight, and then revert back to their old eating habits and regain the weight. 90% of people that lose weight on a diet gain it all back within a year, some even more. Mm. So think of your lifestyle as a marathon. You just keep going and going. And in this marathon, it's a journey. There's no finish line. There's no stopping point. Mm. And, and that's how you have to look at things. And that's why I'm saying about changing your mindset and your attitude of how you approach things. Mm. Now, the other thing you can do is, you know, set certain rules for yourself where you're not going to do certain things. I won't touch Pringles potato chips because mm -hmm. I'm addicted to them. I won't touch a Hershey bar or Snickers bars or M&Ms because I know if I start eating one, I won't stop. So mm -hmm. I treat it like I have, you know, an alcoholic. You're not supposed to have a drink as an alcoholic because if you do, most likely you're not going to stop. Mm -hmm. So I look at it as an addiction, which it is. In fact, Oreo cookies have been shown to be more addicting than cocaine. Mm -hmm. So there's various things you can do. And again, when you enjoy what you're eating and it's healthy for you. Now it's not a chore. You look forward to it as mm. opposed to dreading. And again, I'm not a purist and I'm not saying you have to give up everything. However, in the book, we talk about what cheeseburgers, uh, wine and wedding cake have in common. And I'll go through that briefly if that's okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So you're at a barbecue on the weekend and your host is making the, you know, finest grass fed burgers with, you know, homemade, you know, buns and your favorite condiments. And he asked you if you would like, you know, one of his cheeseburgers, favorite cheese and everything. And you politely decline. The reason you decline is because you're a vegetarian. You don't eat meat. Hmm. And the same host is now asking you if you would like a glass of wine. It's your favorite wine. However, you politely decline because you're female and you're pregnant. So you don't drink. Most pregnant women won't drink alcohol. And then the third one is you're at a wedding and they had a hired a famous baker to bake this incredible wedding cake and everybody's doing an eye and they offer you a slice. Again, you politely decline because it has nuts in it and you're deathly allergic to nuts. So again, it's a hard and fast rule. It's not that you won't or can't, it's you don't. Yeah, but you know, uh, David, thank you again for that. But let me ask you this. I mean, you, you said this earlier about the M&Ms and the chocolates and everything else, right? Now, don't you think that we should be looking for healthier options instead of the chocolates, right? I mean, for example, milk chocolate versus dark chocolate. Um, if you want no nuts, then let's take walnut because walnut is much more healthier than the other nuts, right? But then if you're allergic to nuts, that, that's a separate issue altogether. But what are your th what are thoughts on that? I mean, maybe make wise choices when you're having healthier. <coughs> what, what are oh, your thoughts? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things you can substitute instead of the M&Ms. Cherries make a great snack because they're finger food and you have to eat them slow because they have pits in them. Mm. Uh, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, any of the berries make great, whether it be fresh or frozen. Mm. An apple, a pear, a banana, eat an orange. Oranges are healthy as long as you're not drinking the orange juice. Mm. per se. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do. Nuts, unless you're allergic to them, great snacks, as long as they're raw and unsalted. Uh, mm. Almonds are a great uh, 
nut to eat, walnuts, as you mentioned, very healthy. So there's a lot of things we can do. Uh, even have a slice of cheese. I know it's highly processed. I get the raw cheese, so it's mm. a little bit more expensive. However, yeah. I'm not asking people to do it. All I'm saying is get a higher quality cheese and have that as a snack. Uh, there's so many things you can do. Drink more water. When you drink water, uh, a lot of times we tend to think that we're hungry when actually we're thirsty. Mm. So if you drink the water, then it'll curb your appetite. Mm. A lot of times we also eat because of stress. So look for things you can do to relieve the stress. Maybe talk to a friend, go for a walk, uh, make some notes in a journal. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is um, we eat a lot of our food because it's convenient. It's easier to go through the drive through at McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's. Mm. It's easier to order the pizza to be delivered or picked up. It's easier to pick up a bucket of fried chicken and bring it home. It's easier to get the frozen meal and throw it in the microwave hmm. later on. So, again, when you said that we've become lazy, you're right on that aspect. We don't want to take the time to go to the grocery store to buy the you know, fresh foods, fruits and vegetables. And hmm. then we don't want to take the time to prepare the meal. A salad, if you do it right, should only take about you know maybe 10 minutes to prepare at most. Hmm. And they get to enjoy it. And, again, salads, there's a myth about losing weight with salads. Most mm. people think you have to eat all that stuff. You don't. Um, the The thing with salads is they have a lot of calories in it because of the salad dressing people put on it, the croutons, mm. the seeds, the nuts, the you know processed meat. So again, be careful what you're putting into your salads. Mm. Well, I mean, you'll have to be creative, right? I mean, when I eat salad, I, I usually put goat cheese in there just to make it look uh, and, and be healthy at the same time. When and filling too. Exactly. And goat cheese is very healthy for you. I'm talking about the, you know, processed American or Swiss yeah, cheese. That's, you know. that, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again, David, for explaining that. You know, one last question, if you don't mind, David, you know what? You know that we just had COVID for the last two years, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who are laid off and they're crunched with income and crunched with expenses, right? So, I know and you know that healthy food is very expensive. So it's the easiest way to find, I guess, I wouldn't say cheap food, but just less quality food, right? So what are your thoughts on that part? I mean, there had to be some way that we can help someone out there with a limited expenses, but good food. I mean, what are your thoughts on that part? Well, I would disagree that healthy food is expensive. In fact, it's lesser, cheaper than a lot of the you know fast foods and a lot of the processed foods. So some of the things you can do, uh, eggs are very inexpensive, the healthy eggs. And what I say by that is they should be pasture eggs versus uh, free range or cage free. Hmm. Uh, when you see what free range and cage free is, it means that the hens can go outside, but they're cooped up and they don't. Hmm. Pasture eggs means that the hens actually forage for their food with they eat the bugs uh, you know the grass the worms mm -hmm. if it says grain fed or special feed on the carton avoid it because that means it's corn and soy that they're feeding the hens mm -hmm. so that's what you're getting in your body but you know a carton of pasture eggs is anywhere from five to six or seven dollars and people are like well that's really expensive mm -hmm. well how much are they paying for their breakfast sandwich at mcdonald's which mm -hmm. is five or six dollars so you're getting a dozen eggs you can get you know six meals out of that if you eat two eggs at a time Mm. Um, as opposed to, you know, one meal for the same price. The other thing is uh, oatmeal, not the Quaker oats or the instant oatmeal, but the uh, whole oats, rolled oats, and, and um, steel cut oats. Uh, mm. Very inexpensive, very filling, very healthy for you. And people are like, well, I don't like oatmeal. Well, what I do with my oatmeal, I don't use any maple syrup or sugar or honey to sweeten. I use right. uh, ground cinnamon. And yep. ground cinnamon is a metabolism booster. And then I throw in some chopped walnuts and I throw in some ground chia seeds. So mm. now it's crunchy and it's healthy for you at the same time. Mm. Uh, organic short grain brown rice, very healthy for you, very filling. Avoid the pastas. You know, I know they're cheap and they're filling, but anything that's white is highly processed and not healthy for you. The mm. thing is, when we're younger, most of us will forgo our health because we're chasing wealth. And mm. as we get older, we start spending our wealth chasing our health. So I like to find a balance with that. And mm. as you said, keep it back to basics. Mm. Uh, there's so many things you can prepare. You can get, you know, frozen, you know, 
fillets of fish on sale. You can get things on sale and freeze it in the freezer mm. and, and just, you know, prepare it that way. Um, it doesn't take much to prepare a, a simple meal. And again, we're used to eating larger portions. So when we get used to eating smaller mm. portions and eat slower, then mm. the food will last longer. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again. I mean, uh, we've been told by living in the States that you should just get a big plate and be done with and don't get up, right? I mean, we have a tendency to add more stuff in one shot instead of in small portions. Maybe in that second round, you're fine instead of just a five portion uh, meal at, in one shot. So, uh, David, thank you again for that. And thank you for explaining about the expenses too, because I'm in the same boat as you are. I mean, it's not that expensive. I mean, you just have to make some um good choices when it comes to buying stuff right for example the steel oat that you just mentioned or brown rice and uh so thank you again david for for that but before you leave david it's been really really pleasure for you being here on the show but do you have any last words for any back to basic uh, listeners and viewers here and how is your journey on back to basics too on top of that well the journey has been incredible on back to basics and, and what i would tell people is to uh, start now. And Nike has a slogan that says, uh, just do it. And they missed the boat. They should say, just do it now. Hmm. And the other thing is, uh, yesterday you said tomorrow and we keep procrastinating. So hmm. make it a priority for you to start regaining your health. And you don't have to lose the weight overnight all at once. Those national brands that promote, uh, losing 15, 20, 30 pounds per month, uh, it's not sustainable, nor is it healthy. So look at it this way. You didn't gain your weight overnight. You're not going to lose it overnight. Most people who need to lose weight ask, would you like to weigh 24 to 48 pounds lighter by this time next year? And they'll say, yes. Well, can you lose two, three, four pounds per month? Not a week, per month. And most people say, yeah, that's doable. Okay, so if you lose two, three, four pounds per month on average, because some months you'll lose some more and some you won't lose any, uh, over 12 months, that's 24 to 48 pounds. So don't get frustrated. A lot of people want the instant results. And after two or three weeks, they don't see the results. So they stop. For mm -hmm. example, January 1st, everybody makes that New Year's resolution to lose weight and exercise more and become healthier. And what happens is they start going to the gym. They're eating healthier. They get on the scale and the scale doesn't move. And like, well, I'm doing everything right. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Well, what's happened is you're replacing the fat with muscle. Five mm. pounds of muscle is the same as five pounds of fat. The mm. difference being the muscle is denser, so it takes up less room. Mm. So I usually ask people, well, how are your clothes fitting? In fact, I had one client that for three weeks was doing everything and the scale didn't move. And he finally says, well, I'm riding my bike more. I'm walking five miles a day and my clothes are loose and people are asking me if I'm losing weight. However, the scale's not indicating. I said, don't go by the scale. The scale's going to lie to you. Mm. Go by how your clothes, your clothes will be honest with you. So that's one thing. And then don't get frustrated. Be with it because a lot of those small, insignificant changes that you're making may not show up right away. If, but if you do it over time and it compounds, as Darren Hardy says, then you get that noticeable result over a period of time. So that's my advice to people is keep with it. Don't give up and, um, you know, be diligent in what you're eating and look at your body as a machine and what you're putting into it. Yeah, yeah, David, thank you. Thank you again for all those nuggets that you have shared. And uh, uh, it's been great know knowing you and uh, getting you on the show here. I was so dying for you to be on the show and, and explaining this whole book and the, and the <clears throat> book that I got. And uh, definitely, as I told you, I'm going to read this during the uh, summer and, and enjoy this. Uh, so thank you again for being here and thank you for supporting uh, Back to Basics. Thank you. And one last thing is, you're never too old to start. Uh, I'm 67 right now. I just got back from hiking Kilimanjaro a couple of weeks ago. So you don't want to use that excuse. Uh, I'm too old to, to change. You're never too old to change. Yeah, that is so, so true. I mean, it's just a number, right? I mean, we just go on and go on. So thank you again for that. Uh, David, thank you again for, for being here. And thank you again for uh, supporting me. Thanks, Gersh. Appreciate it. Thank you. So guys, we spoke with David today and we talked about the basics of health, right? And the basics of the nine fundamentals, according to David, according to this book. And we talked a lot, right? And it's all about expenses. It's all about making the right decisions. I mean, yes, expenses, it does get expensive, but you can also make it cheaper too in your own way and your own design. 
Now, as usual, as always, there is a quote of the day from Back to Basics, and hopefully David will like this, and I'll tell you why, because we'll tell you that later. How about that? So here's a quote. The quote is, a little faith can go a long way to accomplish whatever endeavors you desire. A little doubt will destroy your dreams, or worse, it will kill you. Now, hmm, I wonder who said that, right? So guys, as usual, as always, what do we always say at the end of the episode? Everything in life goes back to basics, and that's what we did today. Guys, take care. God bless. Keep on commenting. Keep on supporting me. Because with your love and support, it'll make this happen. Because I do release every day. And we are very close of just ending the season, which is season two. And it's just crazy that how time really flies with enjoying great guests that I've had so far. And there are three things, according to this episode, for me, that is, is a hit, which is the content, the guest, and definitely the host. Guys, take care. God bless. Please do subscribe. And thank you again for supporting me and Back to Basics. Next week's episode on Back to Basics. To figure out where the sticking points are, because mm -hmm. your body is obviously the physical dynamic side of you, but it's run by this thing called your brain, right? And your mm -hmm. mood and your, and your um, perspective. Mm -hmm. And if you can't really hone in on that, then sometimes the dynamics of the body will suffer. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you know, trainers who are really good at that and, and are, driven to find mm. those those possibilities and those capabilities and move through the sticking points and others are just 